My name is Calvin and today I'm happy to share the newest release of Synthize and give you a look at the new masking system. Auto tracking can be tedious when you have to highlight a million points that were hitching rides where they don't belong. The roto masking room has been the solution for years, but has now been revamped with a familiar feature seen in other products by Boris FX. Roto masking in any software isn't the most enjoyable experience. This shot took me 3 minutes and 12 seconds using MaskML, where Roto has taken me almost 10 minutes. With that, I'm excited to share MaskML. So we got our shot here, and there's a fair amount going on. We've got three moving people, we've got some water trickling around, and we've got big moving clouds up in the sky. A lot of stuff that's able to distract our trackers. So if I were to run an auto tracker right now, we're going to notice that it's going to latch on to a lot of stuff that we don't want it to. You can see points are hitching rides all over these people here, and I could spend time highlighting and deleting, but they keep reappearing. And some points are quite hard to spot, like the stuff in the water. We could expose down, but I still don't want to go around highlighting everything. It's worthwhile also to show what the auto button does at this stage. Hit OK. And you can see that we have an error of 24. Fantastic. Which now brings us over to our roto masking room, where you can see that things have changed a little bit. But the main attraction, this nice new mask ML button. Opening it up, you could see that we have a nice nifty UI with some new stuff. Now, if this looks a little scary and daunting, I promise it's not, and we're going to take it one step at a time. And we're going to kick it off with Create. Now, I don't really have to hit Create right now, because when I launched the window, it made me Layer 1, so I can already get going. If I hit Create, you can see it's going to generate more layers. Each layer is just a separate mask, so I can have Person 1, 2, and 3, etc. But I don't need them right now, so I'm just going to undo. Let's name the first layer Person 1. You're going to want to name these and keep track of them if you're going to be doing like 10 or 20 things in your shot. Because if you want to refine them later, it's nice to know which is which so you can grab person this and then start tweaking your mask rather than cycling through a list of like 50 things. So looking at add object samples, we have four buttons here. Uh, very, very easy. Plus, if we start clicking around in our shot, we can start to isolate our subjects. And look at how fantastic of a job it did. So I can go through my shot, and you can see that we're going to start generating keyframes right here. And the reason you want to generate other keyframes is, is if I just did one and let the shot go through, there's a chance that the details might fall off. Like you can see that it kind of did here. So I can keep adding samples and making sure that these major frames are going to do what they need to do. So when I run it, I don't have to keep rerunning it later. I took this as an opportunity to explain the keyframes, but I should mention that if you have a decent selection from head to toe from any of your subjects, you should be able to generate a very good mask for the majority of your shot just off of one frame. Now if I wanted to right now, I can come to the bottom and write current layer. But I'm going to add more layers, more people, more things, and then we're going to hit all layers at the end. So I'm going to create a new person. Person 2. Wow, I can't spell. There we go. And I will start adding samples. Or should I say adding to my sample? I'm actually not too sure how to phrase that. While I'm on this person, I do want to say that if you feel you need to, you can use the subtraction here and get rid of a leg. Or both legs. And if you're not happy with any of these little sampling things that you've got, you can come over to delete and get rid of any of them. Or just come over and delete current. It's going to get rid of the current keyframe that you are on. And then you can start again. Adding our third person. Hopefully I spell it right this time. Hey, there we go. Zoom on in. Another handy little button is if I'm looking around to see what frames that I've added keys to, I don't have a way to see it on the timeline currently. So I could come up and I can look at the frames here and I can toggle between them using these buttons. It's a nice way for me to see what gaps are left unchecked, if I even need them. Something else I want to show while I'm on this last person is the rectangle. This is kind of nice. You can highlight whole subjects and it will find it. Or you can highlight, or you can highlight, let's do that again, a portion. Maybe I just want the legs. Maybe I want his legs. Maybe I want both legs. Oh my god, it did it. I actually didn't think it would. 
uh, jump the gap like that. Wow. I thought I was trying to be goofy there. So looking through this, I think we're fine. There is something that I want to mention real quick that I should have been setting as I went. All these people go off frame. And once I write these layers, it's going to be scanning everything everywhere. So once they're off screen, it's going to keep looking for person one. Now, if you have a 2000 frame long shot and a truck goes off at like frame 300, you're going to be wasting a lot of time. So if I go up to person one, hey, they're named, I can find it. I'm going to come over and set custom. And let's go to the frame where she goes off screen. And I'll just copy this, paste it in there. Done. Now I could switch over to person two. Let's copy that frame as well. Custom. Paste. Great. And he's, there's only, there's barely any frames for the third person. So let's just skip that. So now with the people done, I'm going to go and add some water. And I'm going to come and just add a couple big gradual clicks and maybe some of you to see if I can tighten some of this up. And we'll do the same thing. Go through some major frames in our shot. We're not looking for perfection. Just enough to get rid of these large areas so that trackers don't get a little irritating, I guess. I don't know what I was going to say there. I know I'm not handling the distant ocean here, but it's just easier to separate it off into another mask. So now that I've got that, let's go create another layer. Let's call it ocean. Let's start from the end. Once again, big swaths. And we'll create another layer, call it sky. Because clouds can move pretty fast sometimes, so maybe you want to take care of them. Alright, so I have got all my shapes here. Everything is masked up, and I'm ready to write these layers. So it's going to write out a sequence of mats, basically wherever your image sequence or your synthize file is. And you can tell it where you want to save that right here if you feel the need to. Now there's one thing I'm going to do here. I'm going to turn on write garbage mat also, and I'll show you what that means once this is done. You'll also notice the show live mask button on the left. Turn this off if you don't want a live preview of the masking, and it might speed things up. And with that, let's finally hit write all layers after I frame this up nice and pretty. And go. This is a nice opportunity for you to just go get some tea, do something, I don't know, have fun. When you're back in a couple minutes, it'll be finished. Hey, this is editing Cal from the future. I just want to point out that the estimated time on that progress bar is a little bit erratic, but it only took a minute. And that's over 100 frames working on multiple layers. All right, so it just finished up. If I close out this window, we'll be able to see them all together. Okay, so I said that I would address something. Let's go into mask ML and look at write garbage mat also. What did this do? Well, um, every mask layer here rendered out a image sequence to this directory. Now, if I click browse, it's going to show me where it brought it. You can see that it went and plopped itself right beside my uh, synthize file. Now, I'm going to open this up in a window that actually lets me view these. All right, so here in that directory, you can see that we have a whole bunch of sequences. Kicking off with garbage. Garbage is what that checkbox actually did. It went and combined everything. Because if I were to scroll down, you could see we have person one, person two, sky. So you can take these into other software and make use of them. But sometimes you don't want to spend all that time combining that stuff. So you can just take your garbage and use it as a mat in your 3D software like Blender, Maya, Houdini, whatever. I particularly like using this stuff for previs kind of things. Quick garbage mats to help you get a visual for your scene in other software. Now if you needed to, you can see that I still have some uh, weirdness going on by the legs. You could come and use the existing tools. Great. Now let's hit this with an auto track and see what happens. Now that I got some points down, let's go and turn on some distortion. I'm going to hit F3 so I can see things. Shift G to solve. Nice. You can see that we had some stragglers here. Let's do Shift C. Clean up trackers, see what it finds, get rid of this one that we have selected, switch over to a fine, and watch our error drop from 1 to 0.5. Fantastic. I just undid that solve, and now that we've got all the masking done, you could also come over and just hit the big fancy auto button. 
Let's also run tracker cleanup and make sure that our distortion is on. Oops, it was already, my bad. Auto. And hit F3, and here you can see our scene. There's our little straggler coming back. Delete that. Gonna go to the soul so I can see what it is. It's 0.6, and without that straggler, drops a little bit. We've got a pretty similar result. Shift drag world size down. I'm not going to take time tracking the rest of the shot, but that will be some manual work. I only showed this part so I can show the masks going off screen. And maybe you wanted to replace the environments and wanted to have a better look of these guys' masks out in front. You can invert layer, come to F3, and turn on Roto Mask under View. And that's all I've got for today on Mask ML. Find out more about Synthize and see other training at BorisFX.com.